Hey, hey. How are we doing on this Friday the 13th, everyone? How are we? <clears throat> there's, there's a bunch of you guys already here, so I can't say hey to everybody yet. I do want to say thank you for Becky becoming a new member of the He He and the KK Club. Or the Kiki He and He Ki, He 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 and Club. Oh my gosh, I can't even say it. <laughs> Welcome to the Brook. Aholic Anonymous. Thank you, Jackie Derricks, for becoming a member. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, you guys, hello. You guys are ready. Yes, Friday 13th. I thought we'd do one of his hissy fits. Okay, Bruiser. Now, why do you wait till we go live to do this? We got to get, Frankie's got to get settled down so that Bruiser can get settled down so that everybody can be quiet. Did you just watch Friday 13th, Shelly? Because we were talking about it this morning. <laughs> Didn't you say that this morning you wanted, you liked it? It came from Camp Don Woods, The Legend of Darnisha Voorhees. Oh, my gosh. John Bubba. <laughs> John Bubba, I swear, you need to get on amateur uh, stand-up night. You are a mess. Is it lawful law to, to watch Ed Stevens? I don't know. It might be. But, Ed, hi. Uh, how are you? Are you new? I don't know if I've seen you in the chat before. Hi, Ann. He does look pretty good behind the mask, doesn't he? Hey, you guys, before I forget, please, before I begin, please remember that this is a commentary channel. We're going to be watching the trial. I'm going to be talking over it at some point in time. I hope that's okay with everyone. Um, if you don't like it, like that and you just want to watch the trial and not be interrupted please do not please go to law and crime and watch it that's that, that's what i'm going to say because we're going to talk over it and we're going to we're going to key he and kiki and make all kinds of noise and everything else so is it three kikis he 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 key 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 Hey, Pamela from Alabama. All right, we're ready to go. This first one we're going to watch tonight is the morning of the trial day four. When this is over, then we're going to pull up uh, an, his hissy fit one. But this one I wanted to go and play for you guys first. Hey, everyone. Court will call State of Wisconsin versus Daryl E. Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Yes, good morning, Judge. Sue Alfred, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I am here as a third party intervener, intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value or in turn for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do any of the facts in these charging instruments and I do not consent to or agree to being called that man, Your Honor. All right, the record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks uh, is appearing in person in custody. He is also in civilian or street clothing in a suit and tie, also wearing a mask. Mr. Brooks, I know today you're also not wearing headsets. I just want to make a record yesterday. Um, they were offered to you, uh, even charged. Uh, the different charging unit was um, provided. I did not see you wearing the uh, headset at any point in time. Um, and from my perspective, given your um, either legal arguments made, comments to the court, or questioning of witnesses uh, that you were able to hear. Um, but I just feel it important, given that you raised that issue, uh, to put that on the record. I do want to address uh, the case law that was filed by Mr. Brooks. Um, I have a question, sir, because um, you had indicated there was this United States v. Lopez. I had looked up a case. I don't know if it's the one that you were referring to. I asked you if it was from 1995. You thought it was. Have you been able to look through your documents to tell me which United States versus Lopez you were referring? Um, I have not, but I also uh, cited Hagen's versus Levine as well. 
U.S. 533, or I think you may have I was able that. to find Higgins versus Levine and uh, Malo versus United States. Um, I also found um, a case that is uh, captioned uh, United States versus Lopez um, at 514 U.S. 549. That's a case from... Um, it was decided in 1995. It had to do with the, in part, uh, with the um, jurisdiction. No, it had to do with uh, a provision in the federal statutes regarding the gun safe free zone and whether that was constitutional or not. Hey, Ru, thank you um, for becoming a member of the Hee Hee and Kiki A criminal Club. case, but. Nonetheless, that was one of the major issues in that case. So I don't know if that's the case you were referring or not. Um, With, and without a citation, it's hard for me to know. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking you if you have any other information about that case. Um, I can possibly look on a break, uh, but my understanding uh, of that particular case was um, dealing with the specifics of uh, subject matter and personal jurisdiction, which is why um, it was brought up for the record, which is something that I have been doing adamantly is yes, we know. asking for the court to provide verified proof of jurisdiction, which I have not been provided with as of yet. Court's not required to do that, sir. I understand what your objection is it's been noted for the record multiple times um, and the previous rulings of the court stand I see no reason to revisit those issues or what we call legally um, a motion for reconsideration even if I were to take your reference to these cases as a request to reconsider based on um, a new legal argument um, the cases that I reviewed um, don't support that. Um, I do want to give the state an opportunity to at least make a record uh, as to their position, and then I'll give you the last word if you want to um, make uh, a legal uh, argument to the contrary. I do. All right, so go ahead. I believe, Attorney Basie, you were going to do that. I, I was. Um, Your Honor, I did review the U.S. versus Lopez, the um, Lopez case that you cited at 514 U.S. 549, as the court already indicated. It deals with the Gun-Free School Zone Act, which is a federal offense. The court found that the that Congress exceeded um, its authority under the Commerce Clause, and therefore um, there was no jurisdiction. I don't find any analogy between that case and this case. Again, I'm not sure if that is the Lopez case that the defendant was referring to. With regard to Malo versus United States, this was a, a case involving an accident um, that the plaintiff had with the, um, an employee of the U.S. Postal Service who was driving a U.S. Postal truck, and the issue became whether or not there was a valid claim against uh, the U.S. Postal Service um, as a result of a claim filed against the employee, um, and the court held that there was not, and therefore jurisdiction was not conferred um, to the United States. Um, again, not a case that is on point with any issue that's been raised in this case. And finally, Hagens versus Levine at 415 U.S. 533. Again, this is one in which the um, district court was found to have had jurisdiction to hear the plaintiff's claim. It was a case in which um, a New York, uh, state of New York uh, regulation addressed New York's ability to recoup some payments from AFDC, I believe, and uh, there was a Sarah. claim that that violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Uh, the court did find that the district court did have jurisdiction to hear the plaintiff's claim. Again, I did not find any verbiage from any of these three cases that would um, raise any, any type of argument in this case that this court does not have jurisdiction to hear this case. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Your response. Yeah, I, I respectfully I like the idea object to that. Um, it's it's clear Bubba. in in both Jump of those Bubba. cases that 
ultimately Debbie, those cases were called correct by the Supreme Court in that both cases ended up being voided because there was no jurisdiction. Um, same thing in this case, how, I, how it applies is this court has yet to prove that it has jurisdiction. It has, it has not been proven. There's been uh, no certified document paperwork. Um, there's been no proof. There's Don't been no response to the, to the uh, demand for the statement of particulars there's been the um, no response the top. there's a, there's a to, thing where you can uh, donate over give me a you can buy me a coffee thank you i appreciate you i mean we haven't even established that the plaintiff is a living human being and not an entity um there's so many things that have yet to even be proven and again if both cases that were just cited were voided by the Supreme Court for lack of jurisdiction. How is this case any different? Word. Thank you for your arguments, sir. Thank First you, of Ms. all, Linda. the Higgins and the Milo decisions or Melo, um, these were civil lawsuits. They weren't criminal cases Can at all. They dealt me? with the issue of uh, a federal question or federal claims and jurisdiction in the district court for those particular uh, cases. Um, there's nothing that's applicable to a criminal case in state court uh, for this court to even find they're relevant. Uh, they may be case law, maybe law as it relates to that, but they're not relevant to the proceedings in this case. Um, not yet, Garrett. In the that comes Malo later. decision, for example, that had to do with a lack of jurisdiction because the plaintiff had failed to exhaust administrative remedies. Hey, that's not something that's applicable here. And so in that case, the court did not have jurisdiction. Um, in the Hagen's case, again, it had to do with a federal claim and jurisdiction related to that uh, and not criminal charges brought by a state uh, against a individual. The Lopez decision, while a criminal case, dealt with a federal law and whether the district court had jurisdiction. In Lopez, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down a federal statute that had made an offense criminal, and because of that, there was no jurisdiction. There have been no similar arguments made in this case at all. The arguments that you raise related to the Bill of Particulars, related to um, uh, those types of issues um, have all been debunked throughout the ages in the courts of the United States of America, both in state court and in federal court. And I direct your attention once again to United States versus Benneby, 654 F3rd 753. It's a 2011 decision uh, from the Seventh Circuit uh, that is very on point as to, to the arguments that you are raising. So there's no requirement for this court to do what you are asking or demanding it to do. Uh, and for all of those reasons, this court will deny your request to dismiss, uh, deny your request for uh, the demand for particulars, um, even going back to one of the filings from the third, dealing with your demand for a verified statement, your notice of special appearance. I mean, all of those things have been noted on the record, uh, but to the extent that the court needs to respond to any of those, once again, uh, your demands and requests and objections are either overruled or denied as the case may be. Boom. Your Honor, may I respectfully request a legal reconsideration for your ruling no i just went through my reasoning sir so without uh, you meeting the she standard just, under she just uh, did. motion for reconsideration under section 806.07 uh, that request is summarily denied without any further argument all right with for record, that for the record may i request a legal record. or factual basis for your ruling as you just cited your honor i just um, provided the legal ba basis but, sir you just cited a, a, a case law from United States versus Benneby, correct? Um, my reasoning the stands law. the record Mark. before you and on the record 
speaks for itself. I'm not going to address this any further. Your objections are noted. Respectfully, Your Honor, may, Your objections may I are ask ridiculous. for a written judicial finding of facts objections. and conclusion of law in this matter? You may request that request is denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for an interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter, Your Honor? Uh, that is not an issue this court would address. That would be for an appellate court, sir. Director, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? Oh, my gosh. Um, that request is up. denied. This is a court of competent jurisdiction. On screen, based, on what, based on what law or fact? No, it's okay. Yeah. Um. All right, Mr. Brooks, your <laughs> objections are noted. I want to keep moving okay. forward Hello. today. Yeah, respectfully. May I respectfully object to that, Your Honor, based on the fact that you cited okay. something that was a, a federal law. And then the cases that you went over in the challenge of jurisdiction were all dealing with federal guidelines. Explode. This court's not going to explain the law to you, sir. Um, I've cited the law, um, but I just direct you to those decisions. I believe they speak for themselves and um, your request for any further articulation by this court as to the basis for the court's decision is denied. May I, may I respectfully object, no. Your Honor, and, and oh still ask God. for verified proof of... Mr. Brooks, I've already addressed that the request is denied. I do the orange hands because it's... All right, moving on, uh, can the state... I'm moving object. on, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Your objections are noted. Um, Attorney Opera, I'd like to address the issue... Object, Your Honor. Your objections noted. Um, I would like to address the issue of the subpoenas that were turned over to the state. If you could just make a record on that. Yes, thank you. We have received the subpoenas that were uh, provided by Mr. Brooks. I believe there were 12 in total. Uh, we are endeavoring to have uh, all the individuals properly served, and we will um, assist in arranging their appearance here in the courtroom at the appropriate time, with the exception of that one individual who we believe has relocated to the state of Texas. Um, uh, there are no other concerns that the state has at this point in getting those subpoenas served and getting these uh, people here. I do want to uh, advise the court that one of the witnesses on Mr. Brooks uh, subpoena list does need a Spanish interpreter. And that also reminds me to update the court on our progress in that regard. Funny. Um, the, for the state's case, we believe if we would need a Spanish interpreter and it's still unknown to us or uncertain, I should say, uh, it'd be later tomorrow morning, like probably after the morning break or even after lunch, we could call these witnesses out of order if we had to. So if you want to just say possibly 1 PM tomorrow, we could certainly work around that. He does um, and not understand John Anna. When we get to Mr. Brooks' case, does. one of his witnesses will need an interpreter as well. We'll try and help the court uh, keep track of that as well. Have you been in contact with the individual at the clerk's office that assists with making arrangements for the interpreter since it is the court's responsibility to do that, enough? but it's your request? I try to turn request. myself down. I know my assistant had spoken to Ain't someone in the up. clerk's office. Uh, I think it was last week. I don't know if there's been any recent contact, but I will ask her to do that today. Well, I know I saw uh, one of our interpreters yesterday, and I don't know if that's because of those arrangements or not. Um, and I don't see that person here today, but... Yeah, I um, saw him also. I think he just came in to observe for a while. Okay. Um, can you tell me the name of the uh, witness for Mr. Brooks that needs an interpreter? One. Marquez, M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z. And this, can you just give me a little bit more background? What I'm contemplating is because I need to make arrangements for the interpreter is perhaps we could have that person brought the same time the other witness needs an interpreter and do those witnesses, depending on how long they take, it may or may not be back to back, but maybe there'd be a witness in between. Um, just for court efficiency and uh, to make sure we have an interpreter available. Yes, I understand, and we could potentially call him out of order. He is in the group with the same group that we would need Spanish interpreters for. That would be the Catholic community of Waukesha, 
So we're projecting to get to that testimony tomorrow morning for our case. Uh, as we sit here right now, Judge, we don't think we're going to need an interpreter. Thank you, Dog Row email. But kind of we want to uh, reserve that right should the, should the need arise. And uh, Mr. Marquez was on our witness list. However, we had in, uh, made a preliminary decision that we would not be calling him as a witness. So he's Casey, generally familiar with know. the court proceedings and he knows I don't he may know be called to testify. Um, so it would be tomorrow morning and yes, maybe Might we just want to say one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, the interpreter's here for whatever witness like needs them and we call hands. Mr. Marquez out of order. It wouldn't be a great uh, switch for the jury because we'll already have been dealing with those facts tomorrow morning. Yes, Bobby. There when are do you think you'll know whether you will need an interpreter? Is that for a witness or for someone in attendance? Yeah, no, it's uh, after our first two witnesses as it relates to the Catholic community. We believe we can um, establish all the elements we need through those witnesses. But if for some reason we could not, Amen. then we would have to call some of the Spanish speaking uh, people. I'm sorry, we working man would be prepared to go on with other witnesses and then circle back if, if need be. But we understand we want to be efficient and we don't want to have downtime in the courtroom. So. All right. Thank you. I'm contemplating, uh, Mr. Brook, uh, since the witness you want Not is yet, part of that Amanda. group and there's a possibility that uh, they will need an interpreter. Um, if that's the situation, then I'm going to require that Mr. Marquez be produced at that point for questioning. How's You'll that? be questioning him first since it would be your witness, but uh, I want to make use of wise use of our resource as it relates to the interpreter. Um, it can be challenging to schedule interpreters, especially I had it on a down last earlier minute basis. We, the video um, we were watching. So the clerk's office has been working yeah, with the DA's lot. office based upon the request that was received. The latest information I have, before I get back to you, Mr. Brooks, is that um, Kevin from the clerk's office has, has made a call, but it was say. not returned. I'm, so I'm not done. perhaps you can have your assistant. That was last week. Follow up just to make sure. Nancy, um, I went in and watched her case a little bit. Page. Sure. She's not near as right, friendly. Mr. Brooks, any questions about what I've advised you about the interpreter? Does that change your decision at all to call the witness? Um, it doesn't change I so, Rose. Uh, Rose. me wanting to call the witness. And I want to state for the record that I object to being called their name. I'm a living and breathing human being. Um, okay. I do have questions, though. Living um, and breathing human being. Something that some six other you're people are well aware that, that, that point. Once we went off the record yesterday, I stayed to complete um all of the uh subpoenas I'm aware there of that. there were there were initially 13 and i believe i turned in 12 because the prosecution stated that maybe one of them had relocated but there was just a little bit more clarification that i didn't have yesterday about that whole situation if they relocated or how that would You're play into right, them being subpoenaed. Um, so you probably did. I don't blame her. Is there a question as it relates to that or just you're well, making that record? I'm or making that record and also John, John Bubba. Uh, I wasn't sure yesterday and maybe I should have asked before we went off the record, should I have just turned in all 13 subpoenas that I had and then just wait to see what would have what more information could have been learned from that you can certainly give them the 13th subpoena and we can make a further record later if need be um so and we'll go from there i mean obviously as officers of the court they're telling me that they have this information um about a witness being out of state there's a an, different procedure for obtaining a witness that is yeah, from out of state, YouTube, including I saw it the other day. Um, that the person calling that witness needs to make the travel arrangements and that's in the uh, rules of procedure. So, uh, but it's up to you if you wanna turn that one over uh, so that it's officially one that you turned over given that 
we, you had been given that information and then the subpoenas needed to be refilled or filled out again, um, I'm certainly uh, willing to have that turned over to them and at a later point, a further record can be made if needed. Um, if in the event that that takes place, would it be the same procedure, me having to stay after or how would it work from that point? Because I, I would you, essentially guys. say it would make more sense to just fill them out all together and file them together so everything is just together. It you makes it easier. It yeah, to keep it together. Just the just one? Keep, yes. Yeah, just together. Do, do you need together. another form? That's a good idea. Um, I have going. another form. All right. Do you have a copy of the first time you filled it out so you have some of that information readily at your fingertips? I, I believe I do. Um, I don't, I don't want to say I'm 100% sure. I would have to do some minimal looking through all the paperwork. If not, I have the first batch of subpoenas on my table in my chambers and uh, I can bring that out. I'm pretty sure it's, if it's not in the paperwork that's in front of me, it's in one of these boxes, which as you see is a lot of paperwork. Um, I'm, I'm positive that it's there. I would just have to. Well, let me know on a break. Like I said, I have it readily available and certainly can give it back to you to look at. All right. Uh, what about the, um, did you hear me advise you about the interpreter and making arrangements and potentially calling your witness out of order because of that? Uh, was it Pablo something? Yeah, I think I think that was pretty clear. Okay, good. Just want you to be prepared for the possibility that tomorrow you may need to call that witness. Or the witness will be made available and you may need to question that witness tomorrow. So John I just Pablo. want you to be prepared for that. So that should be the first witness call? It would be out of order. It would still be during the state's case in chief. But if, if we have the interpreter here... Um, because they need it because they're not clear yet if they need that interpreter or not if they use the interpreter and the interpreters here um, and then i'm going to also ask that they make arrangements to have mr marquez available so that the interpreter um, we can wisely okay, use yeah. the interpreter res uh, resource and call those individuals if not back to back um, uh, within short order of one another. Sometimes we have to give the interpreter a break and a rest. So that's why it might not be back to back, but in any event, you should be prepared potentially to question that witness. If they don't call the interpreter and the interpreter's not here and we haven't made arrangements, then I'm gonna work with my staff and the clerk's office to make sure uh, we have an interpreter during your uh, case, you'll just need to tell me where in the 12 you want right now. to call that person so I can better schedule. Hit that 13. like button for your girl if you don't well, remind. Well, you have 13, you but mind, one's an out-of-state, so I'm told. But, all right. Very good. All right. Anything else from the state, then? No, well, that was it for today, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Brooks, anything other than what we've already talked about? Jumpsuit. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if the uh, clerk received uh, two ICF forms that I submitted. Here we go with the forms. I don't know if anything, I can check my electronic uh, inbox. Let me just do that real quick then and see if there's anything there. She must be in a better mood today because she's actually putting up with his one, ICF forms. One of the ICFs we just Of course, this was just day four, so. That would be the one that I filled out last night coming back from the proceedings yesterday. We just addressed that. That was dealing with the subpoenas. Okay. All right. I don't see it. Um, I'll make sure uh, that my staff knows to look for it, and when we get it, it'll be uploaded, and then we can address it at, uh, at a break. The other one was dealing with uh, asking for uh, my my court docket sheet. What do you mean by that, sir? Uh, I would like a certified copy of the of my court docket sheet. It's okay. I need to know what you mean by that, sir. There's many documents in the record. Um, there are docket entries that are part of the electronic file. Um, oh, the, I don't know if we should entire, say those words, uh, y'all. Every, every. What are y'all talking about? Him being in jail? Uh, oh, y'all stop talking about that. Y'all gonna get me in trouble. Is that part of the uh, electronic file? What did you just say? A recording of the proceedings? No, no, no. <laughs> I want the actual. I'm gonna go Hang on. Docket sheet. I'm sorry, from my every brother court proceeding that I've had right, in dealing with this matter. Well, you'll have to address that to the clerk of court. I did. I, okay, I sent so the then ICF. that's why it didn't come to me, and I wouldn't seen it. I'm not the custodian of the the record. It's the clerk of court under the statute. So, was um, it received? I don't know, but I can find out. 
um, and on a break we can advise. I'll direct Teresa to find out from the clerk of court if she received that. But she'll respond in due course. It was it was addressed to uh, Miss Monica Paz. Okay, that's our clerk of court, so that's good that you did that. Sister, come get All right. her Anything else then? She's getting on my nerves. Other than what we've already talked about. <laughs> All right. No. Now okay. he's got Frankie Very all worked well. up. State uh, will down. have its next witness then when we bring the jury out. Yes. Okay, that was that one. I just wanted to play that because, you know, we get into his whole, you know, his whole stuff. Okay. Carrie, what words? Oh, no, it's okay. I'm just saying, y'all, I'm not going to put anything up that talks about him going into gym pop. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't even, when people make comments about that and stuff, I don't even hit the, I don't even like those. Like, I don't hit the, you know how I usually hit my little heart button on there? I don't do that even with those. I don't know. I just feel like it's bad juju. I don't even believe in juju, but I think it's bad. <laughs> Did I scream while ago? No, it's okay, honey. You're fine, John Bubba. Did I scream while ago? Y'all, was it really loud? He scared the heck out of me. He does that all the time. Okay. Um. Hang on. I got another video for you guys. That was just the first one. We're just getting warmed up. We're just getting warmed up. Y'all ready to go? I just lost a bunch of people, too, when I did that. All right. Here's the hissy fit. Anything y'all want to talk about before we go into the hissy fit? Now, y'all are fine. Y'all are fine. I'm just weird about it. I'm just weird about it. That's all. Look at He's already defeated. This is the afternoon. So the morning has not been good for him. Okay. Let me just, I'll set the stage for everybody. All right. We are back on the record. It is uh, 101. No, it's not the rant. PM, State versus Brooks. Appearances are as they were before. I would note I have <laughs> instructed and Mr. Brooks is present in this courtroom. Prior to the... I understand your objections. No, if you would like to go back to the other courtroom, sir, you may, but that is a choice that you would be crazy. making. I am not requiring you. I'm not forcing you at this time. So you're not holding me in contempt? Sir, I am not requiring you or forcing you to go into the other courtroom. Gosh, the morning it is first. a oh, well, no, new but no. part of the We're day. We're going to get to that one. I thought it appropriate to have you brought here. Why? And only if well. you forfeit your right by conduct will I put you back in the other room. Hi, Jason. Arena. So you're going to address subject matter jurisdiction for the record? Are you going to state it on the record? I'm declining to you know what? address I think you're that right, on Louise. the I didn't record even for the that. reasons I've previously provided to you, not the least of which is I have addressed that by way of a written Look, decision. You're right, Louise. It, it Look at him, y'all. He's got orange shirt underneath the, that your shirt. Your objection is noted. That's Can funny. I go back in the other courtroom? Because I'm, I'm not going to do this with you. I'm not. Mr. Brooks, I do want to go over we don't have, jury instructions. I don't, I don't understand the jury instructions. I don't understand anything that's in these proceedings, and I'm not going to participate in, in something that I don't understand. That's your choice, sir. May I please go back into the other courtroom? You can. Based upon your choice and your request, I'll make a finding that he's uh, forfeiting his right to be present in this I didn't forfeit courtroom. anything. I asked. I understand you, Sorry, asked, but I, I feel it's important anything. to also make a finding based upon your conduct. <clears throat> based upon what conduct? Me asking? Are you willing to expressly waive that right on the record right I'm now? Gonna, I'm not going to expressively waive anything. Are you willing to I'm, I'm engage in a colloquy regarding your right to be present? Expressively. Are you an intelligent <laughs> and voluntary waiver of that right? Oh, I'm my not goodness. going to consent to anything that I don't understand, and I will not answer any questions that I don't understand. I'm merely making a request to not be present in these proceedings. And to be in the other courtroom. Again, as I've stated numerous times now for the record, I will Indeed. not answer or Rose. comply with anything I do not understand. Hey, Rose. Dad. 
I'm not making a voluntary wavery of anything. Oh, wait, I gotta take the banner off. You know, this Are was towards the- to be- Wait, hang on. Let me, let me put... rephrase that. This was like the last day. So he knew that nothing else had worked. He was done. There was nothing else that was going to help him. So this is when he went into the whole, I don't understand stuff. Continue on. Um, if I have you stay in this courtroom, are you willing to follow the rules of decorum and courtesy? No. I do not understand the question you are asking. Are you willing to not interrupt hey, Natty Shock. the perceived Natty Shock. disruptive behavior? I do not understand the questions that you are asking. Well, given that he won't answer the questions directly, for now he is to remain in this courtroom. Oh, that's I'm a good point, to Tanisha. Not be in this courtroom. But you won't go through, you won't answer my questions regarding that, sir. I did. I, I told you I don't understand. That's not answering the question, sir. You asked me a question, I answered it. I don't understand. How can I ask, how can I answer something that I do not understand, Your Honor? All right, uh, let me start with the jury instruction. Don't start with, one I would start like with to... subject matter jurisdiction? No, oh, I Lord. declined that already, sir. I'm not going to address under that what law? Under what lawful law? Sir, please do not interrupt me again with the topic of subject matter jurisdiction or um, you run the risk of forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom. Then let me go into the other courtroom then. Are you willing to engage in a discussion about that, sir? I need to make an just, appropriate record. I just told you that I don't understand the questions you're asking. What do you want me to do? I can't answer something I don't understand. I believe you're choosing not to answer that. You can sir. believe what you want to believe. I, I believe that you hide the stuff from the jury. I believe you won't. You're, you haven't been impartial or fair. You haven't let me even enter anything into evidence, which is my right to do so. Your but it doesn't matter what we believe, sir. Your Honor. I'm, I'm merely stating a request to not be present for these proceedings. I cannot answer sir, the questions it, you are asking me because I don't understand them. You understand your right to be present in the courtroom. Are you telling me? You I, don't don't right? I don't understand anything. I don't. I do. Nope. I don't understand. Nope. 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 D yeah. Full on collar. You're absolutely and right. Under what lawful law? You can't for you can't hey, force me to Detroit, stay somewhere Michigan. that I'm making a request not to. You can't you can't make me understand. You can't make me. You can't force me to understand what I don't understand. You can't force that. I need to address one of the jury instructions, number oh, three. That's, that's his argument. So, Your Honor, I'm trying to make a request to not be present in these matters without disrupting the courtroom, as you say that I do, and over talking you, as you state that I do. I'm making a request. Merely to not be present for these proceedings. Obviously, I'm not needed because every decision that's been made here today has been made without my consent. That's mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. telling me that I'm not needed. No, I you're have just the one in hand. Never though. consented to anything that's going on here today. I haven't even been allowed to present any evidence, which is oh something that I stated weeks ago. You're absolutely right, Tim. Weeks. You already knew, Your Honor, that I wanted things to present into evidence. I've asked numerous times for that and have been denied. And, and I don't understand why, why I'm not being able to adequately defend myself. You're, in your words, you're not being allowed to adequately defend yourself based upon your but conduct you this in this courtroom and throughout these proceedings and your unwillingness to follow the simple rules of decorum, courtesy, um, procedure, rules of evidence. You refused to answer a variety of questions this morning when this court went through the, uh, or attempted to go through the colloquy with you regarding your right to testify and your right not to testify. And because of that, and be based on the case law that I cited this morning, I made a finding that you forfeited your right to present further testimony and evidence through other witnesses, and then you forfeited your right to testify in your behalf. I'm not gonna revisit those, sir. I'm not asking you to revisit them, but I'm just, they're, they weren't they weren't correct. I understand you will Because I, I never that. consented to it and I never answered something. I understand and you I just stated the reason why I didn't answer because I don't understand. You cannot 
force me to understand what you're asking me. Nee. Sir, I could not even get through the advisement. You wouldn't even listen. You talked over me repeatedly. Was that from the other courtroom or in here? Because I've been over there all morning. To the place that you are requesting to go back to, right? You you sent me into the other courtroom. You're right, I did. There you go, right. Dad. So I've been over there all morning. With an adequate audio and visual system I mean, connecting the two courtrooms. Your, the functional your, equivalent to your equivalent in this to your equivalent is adequate, but to mine is not. Seeing as how you always state Illinois versus Allen, no, you always state good. that. You always state that, but it never it never refers to a fourth option that you refer to. It never Mr. refers. Bruce, I'm not going to debate this with you if you continue to bring up subject matter jurisdiction, Illinois. I didn't bring Allen, up subject the matter decisions jurisdiction. That I made earlier, I'm trying to figure out why I'm being held in contempt. You are frustrating the purposes of this hearing I'm trying to right figure now, out why I'm being held in contempt. Which is to finalize the jury instruction I, and the verdict forms. Your Honor, I'm merely trying to understand why I went. You hold me in contempt. I never held you in contempt, sir. You, you attempted to. Nope. You've never attempted to hold me in, in contempt. No, sir. There. I'm again. I'm not going to revisit all of these issues. When I asked you where you hold me in contempt, you said civil. Are you going to respect civil. the decisions that I've made? They're they're not I'm they're not, not interrupting. They're not correct decisions, Your Honor. <laughs> I understand that. Well, I can't you answer. Your, you asked me questions. You change your thingy. You asked me questions. I didn't answer them based on my understanding. How can you force me to understand? Asking me if I don't. And then you and then you still make a finding based on that. How how is that lawful law? Mr. Brooks, I stand behind the record that I've made today. And that's fine. I'm, not dis I'm, not, I'm, advising I'm not, I'm arguing with you, you about what you ruled. I'm saying how can you do that without my consent? If you continue to raise the daycare. That Somebody call that's, the daycare. That's a violation of my civil rights. If you that's continue to call the other raise courtroom issues, the daycare sir, and thwart the purpose of this court, which is to finalize the jury instruction and the verdict forms, you will forfeit your right to be present in the courtroom and you will appear from the other courtroom. Okay. Absent, you, I and know you've requested I just, to I just be made here. A, I made a request for the moment we walked in here to not be present for these proceedings. But yet, but you still, also won't uh, have a dialogue with me about your understanding of what Because it's, my, that it's means. my Fifth Amendment right. I'm exercising my rights that I reserved from the moment we walked in here this morning. You can't for you can't force that. You can't force me. You can't force me to do anything. Actually, well, no, you're right. But I can make certain findings you, that you forfeit rights you that can't, you have. And, and, in a and based of on days. what lawful law you're under. I cited the law this morning. All right, I am Illinois on, versus Allen, right? I am that I can on. be present from another courtroom. I if I forfeit my right. Instruction three one five. Your Honor, um, I don't, I don't understand. Language needs to be modified based upon the court's earlier ruling today. I don't understand. I don't understand the proceedings. And I think that should be stated for the record. Well, we got that one. Repeatedly we got it. That I don't understand. It's on the record. You can't force think that's me on to the record? understand. That's a violation of my, of my constitutional rights to try to force something upon me. That's coercion, Your Honor. Co what what? Um, Mr. Brooks, I completely disagree with your characterization of the proceedings this morning. While it is true that you did not consent, you were you were entirely uncooperative with court this morning. That's because I didn't and, understand. I'm explaining why, Your Honor. I'm not I'm not trying to leave it where it was at. I'm attempting to, to answer the questions. I'm attempting to, so to I'm gonna go, explain myself of why I did not answer. It was because the the way that you're making it seem is that I intentionally didn't want to answer, and that's Mr. not Brooks, fair. I'm, I'm moving on to instruction 315. Uh, and I'm gonna still, I still don't understand. So, what, so how can we even proceed? Mr. Brooks, if I'm telling you, you I don't understand, understand what that I'm how many times he no, said that? No, no, I Mr. don't. Mr. Brooks, please stop it. And for the record, me. I don't consent to being called that name. You right. clearly hear me, sir, because if you didn't hear me, then you wouldn't make that statement. So Hearing and understanding hear is two different things. I know Kimmy you says you me, don't sir, understand because you don't have a lawyer. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but you, you're going to, at some point, you're going to ask me my opinion of what's going on. And then when I tell you I don't understand, it's going to be taken as me trying to delay or trying if to do this or trying talking, to do that. If you I will explain why I'm bringing up instruction 315. And I'm not going to understand your explanation. Well, you can't say that if you haven't heard what I have to say. Didn't you try to do this earlier before lunch? But I need to clarify something because 315 
which is the instruction that has the, it, it's titled, Defendant Elects Not to Testify. I had it in there. However, that instruction should really only be given if requested by the on. defendant. There has been no request made. And obviously this court made a finding that he forfeited his right to testify. Oh. And absent Mr. Brooks requesting that instruction to be in, I believe it would not be proper for this court to include 315 in the instructions to the jury. Do you have any position on that? Your Honor, I did look at the notes that are associated with instruction 315, and I would agree. Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on whether this court should include instruction 315? Uh, he doesn't understand what 315 is. I don't even understand what 315 jury instruction is. It's entitled even... Defendant Elects Not to Testify. I'll read it for you. It's, it's you my think I've watched this before. My, uh, <laughs> materials, my um, jury instruction book says to be given only if requested by a defendant, and it reads as follows. This is the actual language of the instruction. A defendant in a criminal case has the absolute constitutional right not to testify. The defendant's decision not to testify must not be considered by you in any way and must not influence your verdict in any manner. So my question is, do you want this instruction read or modified in any way? You just said I got a constitutional right not to testify or to testify. I didn't make either one of those decisions, so I don't understand. The what jury instruction is typically read when a defendant does not testify. In every other case that I've had, the decision on whether to testify was a decision made by the defendant personally. In this case, the court found that you forfeited your right to testify based upon your conduct. That is the ruling I made this morning. How, how did I make that decision, though? I didn't, My I didn't question never to say you yes is, or no. I never do you yes want or no. the jury instructed that your silence must not be considered by them in any way and must not influence their verdict in any manner. What do you mean my silence, my Fifth Amendment right? Correct. But you're a sovereign citizen, I, so you may not have any Fifth Amendment right. Have the jury because I don't, this I don't understand why you're asking me the question, Your Honor. I never, I never decided to or not to testify. I, I never decided that, either sir. way. I understand that. So how can I answer that? I, I don't understand why, I don't understand. We are now at the moment where we are discussing whether the jury should receive an instruction specifically on you not testifying, irrespective of the reason for that. I believe I could modify this instruction to simply say uh, a defendant's silence or, or a defendant silence. not testifying should not be considered <laughs> by the jury in any way and must not influence their verdict in any manner. Are you making such a request for a modified instruction? I don't understand the question because I never decided to or not to testify. I understand. I, I, I understand what you're saying, sir. I, I really do. It. But in light of the court's decision that you forfeited your right to testify, how did I forfeit something? Do you something want I never the said? jury to be instructed something to the effect of they cannot use your silence, meaning they cannot use you not testifying against you in any way? I don't understand because I never made a decision not to or to testify. I'll ask you one more time, and if you do not answer with a yes or no, I will take your answer of not answering as you are not making a request for a modified instruction. How can you do that, Do Your you Honor? want this court, sir, to instruct the jury in any way regarding you not testifying in this case? I don't understand the question. All right, then based upon there has not been an express uh, request made by Mr. Brooks to give either 315 as it's in the um, standard or pattern jury instruction or a modification as this court has suggested. 315 is to be taken out of the jury instructions. How are, the, how are all these decisions being made without me understanding? Because we do have looked over to move on. the verdict forms and other than really what I would describe as some consistency in how <laughs> phrases <laughs> Uh, whether it's all caps, not all caps, but uh, all caps. what we call the sentence capitalization <laughs> for the charges. Um, for example, oh I want to be consistent with how I spell out first degree intentional homicide or first degree recklessly endangering safety. There was just some 
Sometimes it was capitalized, sometimes it wasn't. So we're looking through all of that to be consistent. I want to make sure the word information is capitalized since that's the charging document, things of that nature. It is my practice, and you should be aware, Mr. Brooks, that I always put the not guilty verdicts on top when I hand all the verdict forms to uh, the jury. And by that, I mean it's by charge. So they're collated, if you will. So the not guilty followed by the guilty for counts one through 76. You said it's collated. What do that mean? Um, so I put the <laughs> not guilty, then the guilty for count one, followed by the not guilty and the guilty for count two, and so on and so forth, all the way through <laughs> the remainder of the counts that are alleged in this case, which in this case, uh, total oh. 76. I don't understand. So how? how I how? looked at the um, special questions well, you that are that, on right? the guilty verdicts only. They did appear. To oh, that's right. The photographs. He wanted to submit those, John. Things, but uh, I believe those are all accurate. Um, can I go to the other to the courtroom? State. Since you don't have to answer any questions, but I have to answer all, can I just go to the other courtroom? Not at this time. Opera the chopper. I keep telling you I don't understand these proceedings, and you just keep running right over my rights like they like you don't even hear me saying anything. Uh, Attorney Basie, are you handling the verdict forms? Go ahead. Can I go to the other courtroom, please? Are you waiving your right to be present in this courtroom? I'm not waiving anything. Then the answer is no. I'm making a request. Then the answer is no. Then how is it? So 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 what? You gonna you gonna try to force me to interrupt and do all this so you I'm can make the record you, like and make it seem like I forfeited something that, that I came in here as soon as we got on the record and made a request to not be present for these proceedings. That's what I'm saying, Debbie C. But when I'm making a request to avoid to avoid the drama and all that, sir, the only one with the drama is you. It, it's and I you too, man. You the big contributor to the whole thing, Mr. Brooks. I have to preside over this case. Yeah, and have you haven't been, and you haven't been impartial or fair yet, Mr. Brooks. I have a question to the state. I ask that you not interrupt. And that it's, it's not to about me interrupting. It's about me attempting to understand. I've been saying that since we came in here, Mr. Brooks. I you will. Can't, you I will can't force me to understand. To that. You waived your right to. Counsel. I didn't waive my right to no counsel. Yes, I you gave did. You the contract. Right. I did not. Yes, and you, you did. Sit here and, and say that for the record because that is not no, what happened. Have, it is what happened. Correct. We saw it. So we don't have it. We have the paperwork. Yep, we got it. Because I believe that I gave you the paperwork back that you, Mr. Brooks, you very. I gave it to you, altered clearly, and did not waive it. Have been presenting. A nuanced argument regarding that, that the right to true, counsel right? versus true. the right to assistance of counsel. That is not true. That's a pretty sophisticated argument. That's why I believe you fully understand what's I going don't. on in this courtroom. I don't fully understand. I disagree with your characterization I with your of the right to counsel. You know that you accepted you the way that I gave it to the you. Entirety. So you shouldn't have did that if you if you had questions of me not understanding. I don't have any questions whatsoever. You definitely do because I'm telling you right now I don't understand and you still won't even acknowledge the fact that I'm saying in open court on the record that I don't understand something. I haven't waived anything. You made decisions today that I didn't consent to. That I explained, I did not answer because I didn't understand. That's true. He's which not is my right he to really say is that. Like that. Right, Mr. Brooks, you it's are interfering with the right proper and silent. orderly administration of these proceedings. Um, I understand that you disagree with the decisions that I have made, but you aren't respectful of the decisions. You keep wanting to debate them and argue them. That is not the proper legal recourse at this time. I have asked you if you're willing to. Waive your right to be present. You indicated you're you're not, because and of yet the way you continue you to interrupt. You said waive. I'm not waiving anything. Then that's why you're here until I make a finding that you, by your conduct, are forfeiting your right to be present. Well, make the finding and kick me out. Make the finding and hold me in contempt, which is what you're waiting to do anyway. That's why that courtroom is set up the way it has for the whole time, because at some point it's anticipated that I will be over there. Which is which is not impartial and which is biased. 
It's judicial misconduct. I stated from the beginning, sir, that the goals of this trial. So you're reading from the paper or are you reading or are you just citing which number numbers? one, sir, is is during the evidentiary phase of this was to control the presentation of evidence so as to ensure fairness and reliability of the criminal trial process. And I offered that evidence that you didn't allow. Developing relevant facts upon which a determination of guilt or innocence can be made. What is sometimes referred to in the case law as the ascertainment of truth. There's an equal but secondary purpose and effectiveness. That has been my repeated use of 90611 uh, is what that would fall under. There's a third goal of everything that I've done here, and that is uh, the courtesy and decorum in this courtroom, what I've sometimes referred to as civility. Of course, there are other goals as well, including protecting your rights, protecting the record, protecting the jurors. How have my rights been protected, Your Honor, if I can't even put evidence into Disagreement with the court I can't even make evidence. decisions, sir. Yeah, but how can, I, a, how can I defend myself if I can't even present evidence? But, sir, you have not been willing to follow the rules of civility but and decorum. But that doesn't have anything to do with my evidence. It has everything. I could have did that from the other courtroom, too, correct? Sir, you... If I can be present conduct, from the other courtroom, I should be able to present evidence from the other courtroom as well. And you, by your conduct this morning, sir, are not saying, willing to I'm answer saying, the most saying, basic of questions the about whether you... The totality. Have I, not asked to, have I not asked, in fairness, have I not asked to admit evidence? Have I not asked more than once? Mr. Brooks, you have not asked to present any evidence. Yes, I have. You told me we weren't at the evidentiary phase. Manner. How would I know that if, 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 you, didn't, if you didn't ask, and the, you ask the question? And you, as your own attorney, you proceed at your own peril sometimes. That Whether has you have nothing a full understanding of the rules evidence. of procedure and rules of evidence, or not. And that I has made that abundantly to do with me being clear. able to present evidence. So, Mr. Brooks, nothing this I, is nothing your final I warning. Have been able to be admitted into I am evidence. turning to the state for a discussion of the verdict forms. If you interrupt me or them again, then I will make a finding that you forfeited your make right the to finding. be present. Make the finding. And you will appear from the neighboring courtroom. You want me to appear from the neighboring courtroom? Just, just, I, let's just, I don't. Just let me go. Attorney Basie, go ahead. Just let me go. I felt that all the verdict forms looked um, good. I did ask yeah, your clerk. All right. right, he's interrupted. He's forfeited his right to be here. He's chosen to do that despite the warning from the court. Will be there in recess wasn't no until warning. this taken I'm the one to ask. over so let's, to the let's other make courtroom. The and we I'm have the, the audio when we came in here, and video working appropriately. I asked, I asked when we came in here Madam to be clerk, present for the to other court. By Zoom because we may have to utilize the share screen in order. We don't have to utilize no share screen because I'm not going to participate in no proceedings that I don't understand. I told you I don't understand. We're in a million recess times. until we get the courtroom set up. No, we, we don't have to be in recess. I don't agree to it. Uh... Courtroom. Appears he has headphones on. Speaking of headphones, I do need to make a correction to the record from this morning. I had made a statement that, given his demeanor, the headphones had been taken off the table by the bailiffs. I was incorrect. Mr. Brooks handed the headphones to the bailiff, saying he didn't want to break them. All right, so we are discussing the verdict forms. Um, go ahead, Attorney Basie, you can complete your record. Thank you, Governor. Um, all the verdict forms look good. Um, I did notice, I think it was actually the data in this feed. Um, for count 15, I have a not guilty verdict. I did not have a guilty verdict, but the way that it was on the paper made me believe that I've been something on happened, What's and I think you probably have it with your packet. It just didn't get printed off for me. We'll make sure that that's there. Any misspellings of any names? I did not see any. Super chat. All right. Oh, I bet he does, Bruiser. All right. I uh, did. When we start video conference, uh, Mr. Brooks has been muted. I am going to unmute him right now. Um, and I should state again for the record, the, all of the verdict forms, or at least the 
drafts were provided to him prior to the lunch break. Um, so he would have had an opportunity to review them should he have chosen to do that. Um, do you have any position on the verdict form, sir? I wasn't provided with anything. If I was, I accepted it and returned it for value. And since <laughs> I'm now in another courtroom, are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? You have yet to prove it for the record. Mr. Brooks, you were provided with the verdict forms. What you did with them, I don't know. Again, I haven't been provided with anything. They were provided to you prior to lunch, the lunch break. I haven't been provided with anything. Teresa, you had the large packet of verdict forms. What were they, how were they given to Mr. Brooks prior to the lunch break? By him to the bailiff and the bailiff to him. To be and the bailiffs are confirming that they that the verdict forms were provided to him on his table i will remind you once again that i do uh, it is my practice to put all of the not guilty verdicts on top of the guilty verdicts in a collated fashion um, again i saw a couple of uh, just cleaning up, I would say, not with the words themselves, but just capitalization of various words within the uh, verdict forms, and I'll make sure that's done. The appropriate counts had and have the appropriate um, special verdict questions. Those special verdict questions are only as they relate to guilty verdicts related to the use of a dangerous weapon for counts uh, one through six, the homicide counts, and then 61 through, uh, I believe 60. It would be seven through. Seven through 67 60. have that special verdict. And then the hit and run counts have the uh, special question related to did each of the counts involve the death of a person, and it names the person alleged to have been killed. So those look to be all in order. I've already addressed going back to the jury instructions 315. We have done a little bit of rearranging some of the order, but the content is there. It is my practice to um, read through all of the instructions up until the point of closing arguments. And then I stop. Parties are given their opportunity to argue the case to the jury, and then following that, there are the what I like to call the closing instructions, or uh, which are still quite lengthy in this case, given that they go through the verdict form specifically. Um, and then, of course, the alternate jurors would be selected. Um, but given... Am I muted? No, you're not. You haven't been. <laughs> so I got, I got a question about the... Uh, the uh, the hazard for use of a dangerous weapon. Um, how is that being charged? Is that under 939.632? So that didn't work, so now he's going to start reading stuff. It is in the charging document, sir. Um, how is that being charged? Uh, from my understanding that the, the statute reads the increased penalty provided in this section does not apply if possessing, using, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is an essential element of the crime charge. Without being a without being a, without the vehicle, there is no crime. So that that would apply. So how am I charged with? Um, state one of is, Rather, is your is your argument only as it relates to counts like, uh, one through six or others? Whichever whichever count whichever count has the the enhancement penalty for use of a dangerous weapon. Well, that would be all of the intentional homicide charges and all of the first degree of recklessly endangering safety charges, so counts 1 through 67. So, 1 through 67. Y'all know Correct. she had nightmares about him during this trial. You know I can have did. the state respond to that. Yeah, how, 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 is, uh, how is the alleged defendant being charged? Uh, so, are you asking how are you making a specific request as it relates to the special verdict question? Um, I would say both. Okay. 
seeing it, so I don't understand how. <laughs> That's why there's the question. Reading the statute. And, and which part of this? I'm sorry, which part of the statute are you referring to again? I believe it's 939.632. And your specific argument is what again? Um, how is that enhancement? How is the alleged defendant charged with that enhancement when reading the statute it says it? Well, I just read it. So. <laughs> I believe you're referring to sub two, which states the increased penalty provided in this section does not apply if possessing, using, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is an essential element of the crime charge. Charge, right, that's what I just read, Your Honor. Hi, Mrs. Bastion. <clears throat> Welcome to the Hee Hee Kiki Club. Well, what's the state's response? Using, possessing, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is not an, element, an essential element of either first-degree intentional homicide or first-degree recklessly endangering safety. If it were, it would be one of the elements in the standard jury instructions, and the defendant can see it is not. This is uh, different from a situation like armed robbery, which does require the use or threatened use of a dangerous weapon. So uh, the penalty and answer is correctly charged for those two types of crimes. Any final yes. argument on that, sir? Yes. Um, that's not that's not what the statute is clearly saying. It clearly, it's clearly stated. It does not apply if possessing, using, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is an essential element of the crime charge. If there's no vehicle involved, where is the crime? It has to be an essential essential part of it to even be to even be a crime. The, the the alleged defendant is charged with using a vehicle to commit these crimes. If there's no vehicle, where's the crime? So it has to be an essential element of the crime. Otherwise, there's no crime. I think it's the essential element. If, if, if you read in the statute, it's the essential element. You can't just walk up to some. You can't just walk up to someone and quote unquote uh, run them over. There has to be something used in order for this <coughs> alleged crime to transpire, and that would essentially mean the we quote unquote use dangerous the word weapon. Understand trouble, So without without <laughs> the. Uh, Without the quote unquote dangerous weapon, where's the crime? Hey, Mel. So how how can it be charged when it is the the essential element of the crime charge? <laughs> Damn. Well, sir, I've listened to your argument. I've read the statute. I've looked at the elements for <clears throat> intentional homicide and first degree recklessly endangering safety. Neither one of those crimes have as an element in it, uh, use of a vehicle. There are certainly many different ways that both of those statutes can be violated. While it's true that in this particular case, the use of the vehicle is the mechanism or instrumentality that's being alleged to have been used, but it's not the same as being an essential element of the crime. I think the armed robbery um, crime is a good example of when you could not face an enhancer for use of a dangerous weapon because you can't have the crime of armed robbery without the threat or use of a dangerous weapon and so That's the same argument in this your honor you can't have this alleged crime without the use of the vehicle it's the same it's the same thing essential element of either first degree intentional homicide or first degree recklessly endangering safety so i'll deny the request to strike the enhancer 
for those reasons and find that it is properly before the jury for their determination. Hey, you guys, I did a great video. I'm kind of patting myself on the back here, but every now and then I get a good idea. And I did a really good video of him doing his rant. And we would jump back to when she was going over everything about him waiving his right to a lawyer and how she explained everything to him. So I'll put that link in here so you guys can go back and watch it if you haven't already seen it. Uh, I respectfully object to that, Your Understood. Do you have any other challenges to the verdicts you'd like to raise at this time? Yeah, would, would that be, will my objection to that be noted for the record? It is. Now I request a legal reconsideration of your ruling, Your Honor? Denied. May I request a, a written finding of fact for your ruling, Your Honor? Denied. Denied. Just Ooh, for don't the like record, that. it's my understanding that the verdict forms were uh, put in the garbage by Mr. Brooks and they remain in there. Oh, nice. That was provided to me by the bailiffs. May, may, I respectfully, may I respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law for, for this issue, Your Honor? You may request it. The request is denied. For the oh. record, may I respectfully move for interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter? This is not the proper court to grant such relief. Your attorney would know that's right. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? Your request is denied. Based on what law or fact? Chocolate. Your request Rose is not based chocolate. in law or fact, sir. <laughs> I just stated, I just read a statute that it came from. My argument was based on a statute, a Wisconsin statute. When will the juror books come out? I don't know. Your request is noted. Your objection to the court's finding and determination is noted. Let me get that one. I real quick. decline to issue any type of written decision or stay pending appeal, noting there is no appeal that has been filed. Now let the record show that this court will not allow the accused to adequately defend themselves in this matter. You a fool. You the court's fool. already made its findings regarding the forfeiture of right to testify and the forfeiture of the right to present additional evidence and testimony. Not, I'm not going to revisit the same. Which was not consented to. I never stated that I did or did not understand. To testify. I understand. So how can that decision be made on my behalf when I didn't say either way? What I stated was I didn't understand the questions being answered. Sir, do you have any yeah. other yeah. questions or issues regarding the verdict forms? Your Honor, do, are you are you making a judicial determination that you don't have to answer any questions? I'm not answering those questions, sir, other than uh, how I've that, already answered them. Is that a judicial determination? Sir, every decision I make is a determination by this court. Is it a judicial determination? Sir, I will ask you once more. Do you have any other issues and I will to raise? You once more, I with... don't understand the questions that you are asking. Sir, so do you have I any would... other issues to raise with respect to the verdict forms? I do not understand the questions that you are asking. He has now twice not answered the question. I'll ask one last time and specifically advise him that his failure to answer the question will be taken by this court as a no. Sir, do you have under, any? Under what... Under what law of fact can you say no? When Sir, do you have any understand. additional issues to raise with respect to the verdict forms? I do not understand the questions that you are asking. All right, he has chosen understand. not to answer other than by saying he does not understand the questions. He did not specifically answer with a yes or no. Therefore, this court takes that as he does not have any additional uh, issues that to is, raise with that respect is, that is incorrect. to the that verdict is incorrect. forms. That is incorrect. I say that I don't understand. You can't force me to understand something here. Right. Can't. Did the state have any it other... Is, it is my, it is I want to mute him momentarily. Right. Mr. Brooks, I'm muting you because right. I'm moving on to another topic. I understand you disagree with the court's rulings, but you need to respect the rulings with proper etiquette in this courtroom, which you are demonstrating once again you're not willing to follow, so I exercised my ability to press mute. Um, does the state have any other... Uh, requests as it relates to the jury instructions. I want to kind of full circle back to that because I do need to approve of them. 
I don't think Thank he's going to represent himself again. All right, Mr. Brooks, I'll ask you the same question. I will unmute. Do you have any uh, additional requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Yeah, I have questions related to all of them because I don't understand any of this. My question was not, do you have questions, but do you have any answer requests? Was, and my answer was, I don't understand. And I've made, I've made, a re, I've made several requests. The requests are not related to the jury instructions, which is the phase of this hearing that I this did, court is attempting to conduct answer, with you and give I you the opportunity the to fully participate. Mr. Brooks is choosing not. not to answer my questions. I'm going to mute him momentarily, sir. I will ask you one more time if you have any uh, requests as it relates to the jury instructions. I then will ask you if you approve of the jury instructions. Um, if you do not answer those questions as it relates to the question, do you have any um, requests as it relates to jury instructions? I'll, I will interpret that as a no. And if you do not specifically answer the question about the jury instructions, I will interpret that as your approval. So first question to you is, do you have any, and you're unmuted, do you have any requests at this point as it relates to the jury instructions? And I just said before, I said I do. I said I don't understand the question. Of course I have questions if I don't understand. So do you have any That's requests for any what? additional instructions that yeah, are not I, included or to remove any that are included? Yeah, remove them all until I understand or add the jury instructions that I have myself. What jury instructions do you have, sir? So now, so now you don't know I had jury instructions and I told you this weeks ago. What filing are you referring to, sir? If I've overlooked that, I will certainly reconsider, but I'm not you aware of a specific a, jury it, instruction. It, it seems like you overlooked a lot, Your Honor. Can you point me to a specific filing? So you have all my filings on file? Are you saying that you have, you have my filings and they haven't been admitted into evidence? computer is not working yeah that's what was. we were withholding all that those gems of, of evidence that you had so please direct me to the specific filing that you're referring to that has a request related to jury instructions you just said you just said you was referring to the filings right did you just say that that's not what i said didn't you just say what filings are referring to jury instructions? Did you or did you not just say that? I said, do you have a specific filing you can refer the court to that relates to jury instructions? If so is your computer working or is it not working? It's I being a this, little temperamental, but I have... Dog I just can't you know, you search, just, use my search function, on that so one. if you totally can direct it. me to a filing, that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, a director. It would also filing. be great for those filings to be admitted into evidence. Kimmy. Sir, simply filing something with the court does not make it evidence during the evidentiary phase of a trial. There are rules of procedure and rules of evidence that govern that. And you told me to make all my filings in writing. Sir, I, I said if you had a motion, it needed to be put in all writing. All those were motions. All those were motions. Sir, what filing are you referring the court to? Look through all my motions. <laughs> Sir, it's not my job to advocate on your behalf. If you have something I mean, I in particular. On my Sir, I asked you, ask you to do your job. Sir, if you have something, a specific request, now is the time to make it. Well, how about this? I, 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 don't, I don't accept none of those jury instructions. I, I, don't, I don't accept any of them. Any of them. And again, I'll tell you, I don't understand. Why do I have to keep saying this when it's clear that I don't understand? Your Honor, I can inform the court that um, jury instructions were due, I believe, on August 30th. Um, the state submitted their proposed jury instructions as well as the substantive instructions, and the defense indicated that they um, agreed with our filing. So I don't believe that there's ever been a request um, for any different jury instructions than 
what have been um, filed with the court. So what jury instructions are you referring to or what document is, is being referred to on the alleged defendant's behalf? Because as we all know, I didn't obtain the, uh, the discovery in full until the end of September. So there were there was documents that I didn't even know that existed. That's not our problem. Mr. Brooks, one final time. Do you have any specific requests as it relates to the jury instructions other than your request that they all be struck? And I'm telling you, Your Honor, I don't understand the question. I, I, I can't. All right, then I will take I, his response I, that he does not understand that he does not have any additional requests. I didn't say that. They will be I said I don't approved. understand. They will be approved and are, no, I'm going to have to mute no. him. They are approved no. as <laughs> been drafted no, by no, the no, court no. and modified uh, during the jury instruction Thank conference you, on the record this morning and this afternoon. Um, I will once again review all of them just for grammar, just to make sure all of that is correct. Um, and uh, provide a written print out of the final draft for the parties before we break for the day today. I am also approving of the verdict forms that have been uh, Ancient previously submitted to the parties, just noting there's just a few grammatical things that need to be corrected, but the content and substance are there and I've already addressed on the record um, any requests by the parties this afternoon. You're so rude. The, the final copy that we've been working off of is, is appropriate. Is any comment by about that, Mr. Brooks, or any statement? I don't, I don't consider being called that name, and I've just told you I don't understand these jury questions. I'm not going to know how, how they allow it to pass just because you feel that they should when I'm telling you I don't understand them. I just told you I don't consider that name, but I'm going to answer no, his. No, not his. one of those jury instructions came from me. Not one. How is that fair? Mr. Brooks, this court gave you the draft no, of the jury instructions. I, mean, I need to anything. mute you because once again, he's debating about things that I think are very clear on the record. This court provided both the state and Mr. Brooks with a written printout, 107 pages long of the jury instructions it was considering uh, in this case. We had a uh, discussion this morning. We continued that discussion this afternoon. Prior to breaking for the lunch hour, all of the verdict forms were printed off and provided to both the state and to Mr. Brooks. Um, it is also true that when he was previously represented by counsel, uh, the court had some specific deadlines related to jury instruction proposals, and uh, the state reminded me that there essentially were, was not an objection raised regarding the proposal um, and the filing from the state. I had a brief opportunity to look through the record of the inmate communication forms that have been sent during this trial that are on file. I haven't seen anything that references jury instructions. Um, I'm well aware that he has other filings, uh, but I could not find anything uh, related to jury instructions and any specific request that he is making or made uh, during this case. So for the record, I am approving of the verdicts. I am approving of the jury instructions. And once again, before we break no for record. the day, I will make sure to provide uh, the parties with written printouts of uh, both of the documents as they now stand. Then there are a few other issues we need to uh, I go through. Um, what, what video am I doing next? We got to finish watching I think case. you brought these up prior to the break. Maybe it was Attorney Opper. 
uh, in terms of s scheduling and I, what I would consider other housekeeping issues, but go ahead and remind me once again of the issues you wanted to bring up. Oh, it was the alternate um, sequestration and there might have been a third. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, the uh, question is to the uh, sequestration of the jurors hey, once enjoy. they are uh, excused for deliberations and should the timing require that, uh, you know, an overnight stay or something along those lines. We wanted to discuss that. We wanted to discuss what the court intended to do with the three alternates once they have been selected. Um, it would be our request and position that they should remain in a secure location separate and apart from anyone else unless and until full deliberations are complete by the 12 selected to decide the case so that if needed and um, in light of the Mary brief the COVID history we have on this record, if needed, one of the alternates uh, could slide into a uh, position of one of the 12 who are deliberating uh, if, if that became necessary. Um, hey, Bama. So we wanted to address that and then we just wanted to address uh, timing generally for closing arguments, uh, verdict uh, returned by the jury and then uh, the court's intentions as to the rest of the week uh, should there be guilty uh, verdicts returned. Sure. Um, before I address all of those, are there any of those final type of issues, sir, that you would want the court to address? You have been unmuted, so you can answer that. Oswald Bates. I'll, I'll look. Look at He's Mr. Brooks, do you have any of those final type of everybody. questions or issues that you want the court to address? Oh, okay. Damon Wayans. You are unmuted. I am. I just told you I'm not. I'm not. since since nothing since nothing I say even matters at this point. I'm just gonna tell the jury what they need to know. I'm just gonna tell them the truth. What I think, Mr. Brooks, you are aware that your closing arguments have to be based on law and fact, correct? I mean, they're gonna be based on whatever I base them on. Well, I trust the state will object hey, when appropriate well, if appropriate be a whole lot of objection then because i'm going to tell the truth you, you oh. haven't you haven't allowed you just truth. been making all the decisions for me even though you know I, I told you repeatedly that i don't understand and you still make re decisions based on 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 my behalf without my consent without me i'm telling you i don't understand and you still make a decision determining my life Are you telling me, sir, that you will refuse to follow the simple rules of decorum, courtesy, it, 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 civility, it, it, no, the no, rules of don't, evidence, don't and come, don't try to come the rules of procedure? Words. Don't try to come with your slick words and don't put words in my mouth. Yo, sir, slick, I am not being slick. I'm trying to you, preserve you, you the been, integrity. Okay, You've been slick. You've right. been slick. All right. I'm going to mute you, sir, since what you are saying is not productive. It is not courteous. It is disrespectful. I, I need to I, love it. I need to go I over these all right I'm muting him because I need to go over these important issues that have been raised by the state so as far as the alternates I do think it is important to keep the um, alternates who uh, in a secure location even if that means an overnight um, unless and until verdicts are reached in this matter and I will uh, so instruct the clerk of courts to make those arrangements. We have been doing that all along in any event. Um, as far as selecting the alternates, um, obviously each of our jurors have a number. I intend to have uh, pieces of um, uh, equal size pieces of paper made, folded up with each of their numbers, put them in the uh, same turnstile bin that we utilized for the selection of jury uh, preemptory strikes by lot and to simply pull out three names those will be the alternates and then the or I should say not names the numbers and then the numbers that are remaining would be those 12 who will deliberate um, and so I'll have I'll make sure that that's out 
uh, for the appropriate time. As I indicated this morning, uh, all of the jurors were provided with um, some information regarding sequestration. It is the practice of uh, that I've uh, approved in this case that the jurors provide us with certain emergency contact information so that we are able to get a hold of families should there be the need. They're given information regarding sequestration, the purpose of it. If I have not made that a part of the record, I will make sure to get a copy of that uh, filed in this case so that uh, both sides know what was provided to uh, the jurors uh, today before they left. And then I'll also make sure that when the 12 are deliberating that the three who are not are taken to a different uh, jury room with um, a bailiff um, and again kept in a secure location but separate from the other 12 uh, in the event one would be needed we would then take up that issue at that time but i think it's good practice to have them available if that becomes good night, an issue Bob uh, as far as timing, I'll first address, um, I have instructed the jurors to be back at 9 a.m. That's because typically we have a few things to finalize in the morning, so we'll start at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Um, I will, it will also give the parties one final opportunity to read through the many, many pages of jury instructions and verdict forms to just make sure there aren't any other issues that jump off the page or that need to be addressed first thing tomorrow morning but then I do intend to start with instructing the jury this case will require a, a very lengthy time of the court reading off the jury instructions I do believe it will require me to take some regular breaks probably every two hours until the jury instructions are read with perhaps uh, a longer break at the lunch hour and um, my best guess well said Gringa. is that it'll take between five and six hours to fully instruct the jury that's based on the 107 pages now some of those pages though are after argument and so that really kind of begs the question is will the parties get to their closing arguments tomorrow or will that be done Wednesday morning? I certainly would like to have. Hey, I have a question. Does anybody remember or know if at the beginning of the trial, they said how long they anticipated the trial to last originally before all this? Because it started, I got to look at the dates of when it started and when it ended. For some reason, I'm thinking the 3rd or 4th of October. And then he was sentenced on November 16th or 14th, 13th. I don't remember. Did y'all remember the dates? The parties make their arguments. Um, yeah, Clark, I see the instructions that we have thus far? The packet. I just. It should be done. Okay, thank you. Single side. You think it was two weeks? They start on the 3rd of October. So given so the instructions that I read prior to the parties giving their closing seven day trial <laughs> arguments uh, finishes on page 73. So okay. It, so the prosecution said it'd be a seven day trial. Given that. I turn this down a little bit. I believe that the parties will be able to give their closing arguments tomorrow it just may be depending on where no, that I'm not going to show raw footage the final Garrett. instructions are given the following morning because that's another 30 pages I'd like to be able to they do set it aside three weeks um, it just really depends on how late of an evening they said somebody um, calculated it to, he took up 48 late, hours worth of but Delay the jurors go to the hotel and then starting their deliberations in the morning if that's what needs he was to sentenced be done. on the 16th. Okay, thanks, Chef Poodle. Understood, and we'll be ready. I think 
from our recollection, it took you about two and a half hours to read the preliminary instructions, which was 69 pages in length. So if that holds, I think, you know, we reasonably could do closings in the afternoon, and it'd probably take you about an hour, hour and a half to read those remaining 30 pages. And we may still be able to wrap up by four or five o'clock in the courtroom. Thank you, little angel. I think that's a reasonable time frame. Do you have any estimation uh, on the length of your closing? I'm contemplating maybe putting a time restriction for both parties. I mean, it's a yes. we had a solid 15 days of testimony, so I'm mindful yeah, that this somebody, is not a 30 minute closing. Somebody well, said actually, they did. I'm trying to keep it in the 30 to 45 minute range. Just um, night, Shelley. Out of courtesy to the jury, and to highlight the important points. Do you think it would be reasonable to give the parties an hour total that would reserve had to read whatever's left the from your every time they initial for your any rebuttal? Yes. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on that? I am unmuting you. I would note he takes the headphones on and off throughout. He doesn't have them on. He's looking at a book. I oh, wish you would stop saying the book. I'm looking at the Bible. Thank you. Not just a book. It's the book. Can't disagree with you there, sir. Oh, he's going to school on her on a, how to be a good person. How many people actually live by it, though? Anyway. Yes, some people do. Some people do, but Sir, you don't. I'm contemplating putting an oh. hour time limit on closing arguments. I ain't doing no closing argument tomorrow. Um, the closing arguments will most likely be tomorrow. Given, I'm not doing it tomorrow. Then you'll forfeit your right to give one, sir, because as we have. You can't, you can't force me. You can't force me not. What type, what type of court is this where you can say you're going to force somebody not to be able to give a closing argument? How is that law law? Sir, if you choose not to give one ah, ah, ah. That law for law? <laughs> sir if you oh, choose God. not Damn. to give Good one God. at you're not letting me finish and you're mocking me yes. right now which is incredibly disrespectful once again okay you didn't even let me get my sentence out uh, 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 I'll, I'll mute him once again because clearly he just wants to be disruptive this afternoon but as we have been talking about over the course of the last, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, talking about the timing of everything tomorrow, even though I have 107 pages of jury instructions, um, the first 73, I think, deal with what is read prior to closing arguments. That means oh my gosh, the John parties Bella. should be prepared to give their closing arguments tomorrow afternoon. Um, I will do my very best with just one mid-morning break to get through all of these, the first part of the instructions. Then the state will give its closing argument. Um, I'm giving the parties one hour each. I think that's reasonable under the circumstances. Um, whatever the state doesn't use in its initial time of closing arguments, it can reserve for rebuttal. But then following the state, there we may need to take a break of some sorts, probably before the defendant goes, just for the jury's sake and the party's sake, we will need a comfort yeah, break. A, pack a day on um, extra we everything. We should be prepared to go him. tomorrow afternoon. Then the state, if they have any rebuttal, will get up within that time limit. I will uh, myself and I'll have my clerk make sure we um, accurately time that. I will read the final instructions. And I'll really leave it in the jury's hands. If they want to start deliberating, that's fine. You know, if it's 7 o'clock at night, I'll probably tell them um, we're going to break for the night. They'll be sequestered, but they will come back and begin deliberations in the morning. Um, that will be Wednesday morning. But there's now right. that I really kind of laid that out and thought about the break I will have for closing arguments with even my 107 pages, we can get this done tomorrow. Um, and so that's my expectation. So, uh, Mr. Brooks, I'll unmute you, but that is the expectation oh of the court that closing arguments will be done tomorrow. You can't, you can't rush me to judgment or you can't practice law from the bench and tell me when I can do something and when I can't. Mr. Brooks, I actually can under all of the rules of procedure. It is my job to make sure there's effective and efficient administration of this trial. So, you so are then, then I, I should be allowed to, then if that's the case, then I should be allowed to tell the jury what they need to know, which is the truth. 
that they have the power. They have the power to nullify laws of Tatum and You are law. absolutely not allowed to tell the jury that. There's a jury instruction that I will have ready to go if you even attempt to raise the issue of jury nullification, oh, so, sir. You have so, absolutely so. no right to raise that. That is oh, clear I can, under I can, the law. I can, raise, I can raise what I want to raise. And you can't, so you got to get jury instructions at the last minute. Then you should have never approved them from the get-go because I never approved them. I told you I didn't understand them at all whatsoever. And you still passed it. Sir, if you understand jury nullification, you understand jury instructions. It's clear to Man, me you've done your homework. I don't care what you're talking about. I don't care what you're talking about. I'm going to let them know that they can nullify any law they don't agree with, which is my right. It is not your right to do that. Not. Say it is not. It is tell not your not. right to raise show jury me, nullification. Show me lawful law then. Show me. All right. I'm going to mute him once again. He's starting to raise his voice. He's starting to hit his hands on the table. It's very clear to this court that uh, it's going to be a challenge tomorrow during his closing arguments. Um, he does not have an unfettered right to say whatever he wants or how he wants. Um, if he um, is going to be adamant about defying the court's rules, which I will tell him in part what they are today, and I will work on that as we break and have a very clear advisement for him tomorrow morning, um, he may run the risk of being put in the other courtroom because he'll forfeit <laughs> by his conduct his right to be present here. But he's still talking. And I will be able then to exercise the mute function. I have to balance, frankly, the fact that he's in custody that it takes time for this jury to be excused. They have to walk an entire hallway behind me. I frankly don't want him to look um, worse than what he's looked, frankly, in front of this court when they haven't been in this courtroom. I need to preserve how he looks to this jury. And I will need a very clear Pledge by him that he will follow the rulings that I make as it, re as it relates to the closing arguments. He cannot raise jury nullification. He cannot raise facts that are not part of the record. Um, he cannot raise subject matter jurisdiction. Um, he needs to argue the facts based upon his theory, uh, based upon the evidence that's been presented. Um, <coughs> And those are the bounds. Um, if he's going to, I, I can only imagine there may be some objections by the state. If there is an objection, I expect that he will stop and wait for this court to rule on the objection. I expect that if I sub sustain an objection, that he will honor it. And if he can't pledge to follow these very simple rules of courtesy and decorum that are consistent with the rules of procedure, and the rules of evidence, then he will very he will be in that other courtroom for the, his closing argument, so that I can exercise mute, frankly, to protect how he looks to that jury, because that is the balancing that I am tasked with tomorrow, is to ensure that this jury makes a determination based upon the evidence and the law. You do not have a right to talk about sympathy. That's very clear in the case law, whether it's evidence or arguments. The juries, if you read through the jury instructions, sir, you will see they are specifically told they will not be swayed by sympathy, by prejudice, or passion. They are not to be themselves with any penalties. You can't argue penalties. You can't argue jury nullification. You can't argue legal issues that aren't relevant to the elements and the other law that's in these jury instructions. And those are the very clear rules that you will need to follow. And like any other time in this trial, if you don't do that, you will forfeit your right to argue your case to the jury or forfeit your right to be present for in this courtroom and appear from the other courtroom. And I'm put that is you are squarely put on notice of that here. He's still today, talking. Look sir. at her. With that, I think I've addressed all of the issues Probably the state has sleep. asked me to address. Oh, one other issue. No, no, timing. Man, no, no. I know we have some time on this. 
I realize that there are many, many victims who may still be watching the proceedings remotely. Um, there may be news media, in fact, that may want to cover their verdicts. Um, and that this jury will take some time due to the sheer volume of counts in this case. When this court is advised that verdicts have been reached, I'm contemplating between 30 and 60 minutes before bringing everyone back into the courtroom for uh, the verdicts to be read in open court. Um, and if parties believe I need to wait longer, uh, then let me know. But I think um, I think some of it will depend on how is it late at night? Is it during the day? You know, are we dealing with any kind of traffic issues? I realize Mr. Brooks has family in Milwaukee area that may want to be here as well. Um, even if I consider kind of you know the outlying area, you could be as, as much as 30 minutes away. So that's my initial thought on that. Any statement from the state on that? Not on that issue directly, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. It's okay. I apologize. Any other issues? Yes. Uh, my other issue as to verdicts was seating, if you intended to maintain the designated benches for the reasons you just said. I would intend to keep the seating as is. Okay. With the uh, reserve? The entire uh, side behind the state for victims. Okay. And the other side Public. reserved for the first five minutes or is that open seating over there oh uh, my previous or my rule throughout has been 15 minutes um, what I would say is any open seating will open the courtroom it'll still be open the whole time because we're waiting right so it has to be so any seat that's left open within 15 minutes uh, victims could also sit on the other side okay if that's what you're asking me. yes all right, Mr. Brooks, any further topics by you? Am I muted? No, you're unmuted. <laughs> so, again, I don't understand nothing you just said, but... Um, <laughs> but I'm going to comment on it. I don't... How, how, can you, how can you deprive me of my constitutional right? How can you trample on my constitutional right? How? Sir, you can forfeit a number of constitutional rights by uh, misconduct on your part. Not if I reserve my rights, you can't, you can't let me reserve my rights again, take them from you. Sir, I direct your attention to Chambers versus Mississippi, Rock versus Arkansas, State versus Anthony, Illinois versus Allen. Did they reserve their rights? The Benaby decision. There, there's a host they, of case they, law, they, sir. Are simply mistaken on that. So I'm muting him once again. He's not giving me any other issues uh, to address. Um, we are in recess. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I have go ahead. I'm you sorry. do. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted the record to reflect that at about 2:04 p.m., your <laughs> clerk had uh, provided the final version of jury instructions to both the state and to the defense. I watched on video as Deputy Wittig left this courtroom went over to the other courtroom, handed the final jury instructions to Mr. Brooks, and he immediately turned and dropped them to his left off the side of the table. I can't tell from the video if that's where the trash can is located or not, but I did see that immediate response after he was handed the final jury instructions. Uh, another did that thing- include the verdicts or just the jury instructions? No, just the jury instructions. I'm so Okay, it's just look, the jury instructions. Look, look. Thank you, because I didn't see that given some of the things I was looking at up here, so I appreciate that. Uh, look at him. Were, were all jurors or will all jurors then be told to report with an overnight bag? That's part of the instructions okay. that they were Okay, and, and you're going to make that available to us. Yes, okay. I'll, I'll get uh, Lauren down here right away, and I'll make sure that before Mr. Brooks um, is taken back to the cell, um, I see your arms waving. I'll get you in a second. That, it, that he's provided with that as well. <laughs> All right. And you as well. And then one <laughs> final thing as to timing, and again, I don't mean to be disrespectful to Mr. Brooks or anyone involved in this matter, but should there be any guilty verdicts in this case, would you be intending to proceed to sentencing yet this week or at a future time? You know, that's an interesting question because I don't know how many victims will want to speak 
Um, if we have time, I would certainly consider that. I mean, I have this entire week set hey, aside Matt. yet. Um, and I have Monday morning, but I have some other things Monday afternoon, and then I am not available the rest of next week. So it really just depends on the timing. Um, I would need to know from both the parties whether, whether they anticipate anyone speaking other than the parties themselves. Any family members? Yes. I don't we, think I need a PSI. This is a trial. This is not like a, a guilty plea. So, Mr. Brooks, I'll get you. I'm unmuting you. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're unmuted. Hey. What? Since we're all making records to make you look bad, I think we should say for the record that one of the rights I have is to demand that the court place in the evidence any unrevealed contract, statute, laws, rules, or information being used against me under the Sixth Amendment. So how come how come that hasn't been placed in the evidence? What law are you referring to, sir? I'm, I'm referring to my rights under the Sixth Amendment. And, and what my case law says you have a right to do exactly what you just said you have a right to do? The Constitution, Amendment 6. Sir, that is very general, your statement. It's vague. There's nothing so specific go you have so referenced. You want, you, want, you want paragraph two or something like that? Is that what you want? Thanks, Dred. No, that's not what I'm saying, sir. You're making so, general arguments also, that aren't based in fact yeah. and are over generalizations of what the law requires as well. I accept for value and return for value any documents in this matter. Since, you know, it might be another record of what I'm doing, you know, since it's always a record of what I'm doing. And I also have the right, I also have the right to ask, is this common law or advocacy law? Because judging by the gold eagle on top of the flag, it, it's some explaining that needs to be done. And that is a military symbol. So is this a common law court or advocacy law court? Mr. Brooks, I'm frankly not going to address these nonsense legal theories of yours. I'm muting you. Um, they have been debunked. They are typical sovereign tactics that have no place in our judicial system. Um, we are in recess. I'll see everyone tomorrow morning at 830. I'll just direct the bailiffs to wait until we have the verdict forms to give. And if it takes us longer than 30 minutes, we'll make sure they're delivered to him in his jail today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Gotcha, Brooks. Gotcha. Last word. I love it when at the end of all the times when they go off the record and he's still talking and she and they they mute him. <laughs> Look, you took. What do he say? What do y'all think he said? What nullified? What? What was he saying, you guys? Y'all want to go back a little bit and see what he said? The victim. Oh. Let's see. I'm doing, you know, this. Dang it. I knew I'd go back too far. <laughs> I want to see what he's saying. Oh, dang it. Hang on. Oh, for fudge sakes. I guess I can't Is get it. Unrevealed contract, statute, laws, rules, or information being used against me under the Sixth Amendment. Oh, shut up. Well, I can't get it there because I can't get the thing to work. Anyway, I just loved at the end when they when they all just told him to, you know, even the, the media, they just shut him down. I don't know. Maybe I guess they, they shut the mics off in the courtroom. I guess that's how they did it. That's hilarious. Hey, you guys, you guys, y'all have been wonderful this evening. I want to thank everybody that's watching. we got 325 right now. That's awesome. Um, a lot of people have hit the chat, hit the like button. But if you don't mind, if you enjoyed watching this, please hit the like button on your way out. I appreciate it. And I'm going to do something tomorrow. I'm not sure yet what it is. And I'm not sure what time. So just be on the lookout for me and your little pop-up notifications. Um, we'll do something. So I appreciate you guys being here with me tonight. Y'all have a blessed, blessed weekend. And hopefully we will all be back together again tomorrow. 
Night, y'all.